Good morning. Welcome to Worship at First UMC St. Augustine. I'm your pastor, Pastor Tim Turner. Uh, this morning's a special Sunday for St. Augustine UMC. Uh, this is our 59th annual missions conference celebration. And so the recording this morning is a little bit different. That's why I started out here in the, the church foyer area. I wanted to actually show y'all something if you have not already seen it. On the front front steps of our sanctuary, we have a bunch of special flags waving today. Well, we've had them waving for the month of April. But these are some flags of different different countries, different mission fields that we've been in over the past 59 years. There's there's a lot more around the corner and by the playground area. But I wanted to start by, by showing you these flags, giving you a picture of missions here at St. Augustine. We'll go back inside here. And, and uh, on this upcoming Sunday, of course, I'm recording this on a Saturday. We'll have some of the flags of current places we're, we're supporting. You see them lined up. And all of these flags are going to be brought in tomorrow on Sunday and lined up on both sides so we can see the places we currently are supporting. And so let me get this set up, if you will. So you can see how this church has been a missional congregation for uh, pretty much since its beginning back in 1847. It, it began as a missionary church, but we've been doing this missions conference for 59 years now. It's, it's, a, it's, it's really a, quite a big deal to see all the flags, I don't want to spread them out. They've got them lined up uh, in a certain order to bring them in a certain way tomorrow, but uh, it's just a special Sunday. And so this, this Sunday we have a missionary come in. It's, it's Reverend Dr. Charlie Bing. He'll be preaching tomorrow. And so what I did for this recording is I dug out one of the, the sermons I preached on Acts a few months back. It's a very fitting sermon for this this Sunday's a missional theme. Uh, so, but first, let's let's sing together, shall we? I think this is a, a favorite, a song favorite. It's definitely built around missions, and many of y'all know it now. So let's let's sing build your kingdom together.
Sunday, this missionary conference, that you build your kingdom through our hands and feet. Come call us to partner with you in mission. Father, for we are your hands and feet. We do pray that you speak through us, work through us, move through us. Even more, show us how how to follow, where you say go. So Father, we worship you, our missional God, the God who never stops seeking the lost, who never stops speaking throughout all the earth because you don't want even one to perish. You are the God of love. And your love compels that mission. So Lord, here we are to worship you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, as I said a minute ago, this morning I'll be preaching from Acts chapter 1, chapter 1 and 2, really. It's a sermon I preached back in July of uh, last year, so almost, almost a year ago now, not quite, but um, it's a beautiful passage of Scripture for today's missional theme. So Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to start by reading the first 11 verses. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After Christ's suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel. He replied, 
It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, he, as, he, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. He'll come in the same way you saw him go. Yeah, that early group of the disciples, they, they really must have felt quite jarred by this scene in Acts chapter 1. I mean, this is after the cross happened. They've been through all that sorrow. This is after the resurrection. They've been through all that shock and surprise. I mean, Jesus at this point has already been walking and talking in and, and his heaven on earth kind of body. He's walked through walls, by the way. Heaven on earth kind of body for about 40 days now. This is a jarring season of life for them. And yet, even after Jesus conquers death itself, he still, especially this passage I just read, Jesus is still preaching about the kingdom of God. I'm going to ask, why is Jesus still preaching about the kingdom of God? Hasn't the kingdom of God already come? We've already done the cross. We've already done the resurrection. Why is he still preaching about building the kingdom of God? And really, those must have been jarring moments for those early Christians. And I love how one of the apostles in verse 6 works up the courage to finally ask the question we all want to know. He says, Lord, really, is now the time that you're going to build the kingdom? I mean, we've been talking about it. The question, it, it, it really makes perfect sense there in verse 6. I mean, in our world today, if we had Jesus face to face right now, what would be the first thing we would ask? I mean, I know what I'd ask. I'd say, Jesus, please tell me you're building God's kingdom here and now. Please tell me the time has come. Please tell me the world's pain is finally ending. But look how Jesus responds in verse 6. Oh, this is verse 7, I'm sorry. It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. You will receive power when, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power. I'm not going to give you an answer on when this building the kingdom thing is going to happen. But I am going to give you a promise. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, even to the ends of the earth. Did Jesus just give us a job? It sounded a lot like Jesus just gave us a job. We asked, when, when are you going to build the kingdom? And it sounded like he just gave us a job. I mean, Jesus is the king, right? The resurrected king at that. Didn't he just conquer death? I mean, surely Jesus wouldn't leave us behind at such a time as this. I mean, surely now is the time God would build his kingdom. Why is he giving us this word about a story that has not finished yet, about the Holy Spirit coming at a later time and giving us power for some kind of mission. You know, I think it's easy to feel a bit of that confusion, that even frustration that those early disciples must have felt as they looked towards the sky, watching Jesus go, go back towards the Father. Wondering about all these things. I think we've felt the same frustrations. We've known the same confusion. 
I mean, isn't it high time that the king would come and, and build the kingdom? I mean, how much longer can our world last in all this pain? And yet the angels, they ask the disciples a question that just echoes in my mind. Why are you standing around and looking at the sky? We sometimes get stuck looking at the sky, don't we? We get stuck looking at the sky and, and, and crying out, come, Lord Jesus, come. Oh, well, Jesus keeps giving us that answer in verse 7 and 8. But you will receive power. You will be my witnesses. And years ago, I used to run around with a group of Christians that were obsessed with the end times. They were obsessed with the day of Christ's return. I mean, it seemed like every other news headline, they would gather together and, and talk about how Christ was returning any day soon. That Christ's return was imminent. Any news headline that happened, that's what they would, would say. Now, I, I fully believe Christ is returning any day soon, but, but man, that angels, those angels, they ask a piercing question. Why do we stand around looking towards the sky? Isn't there work to be done right here? Didn't Jesus just give us a, a mission, a job? You know, that group of Christians that I ran around with, that group that was obsessed with the end times, they never really talked about the present times. Not really. They grabbed the news headline and talked about Christ's return, but they never talked about doing anything about the headline. You know, Jesus does things a bit differently, doesn't he? Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, It's not for us to know the times or the season. But it is for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit power right here and right now. It is for us to become a living witness to the gospel in this present moment, in this present world. But as we watch Jesus saying these last words and ascending to the Father, there's still a lot of confusion in there. I mean, the, the angel's piercing question, I mean, we eventually move along from this this place, but, but the king, King Jesus, he still left. The ascension still happened. We still don't have Jesus face to face. I mean, we're not exactly sure about this kingdom building stuff without our king face to face with us, leading the charge. How do we even live as a witness? What really is this waiting for the Holy Spirit power thing all about? We, we, we almost become that fledgling church as we ask all the same questions they must have asked. Verse 12 picks up the st story as those early disciples decide to wait and pray in Jerusalem, just as Jesus had said. Verse 12 says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mountain called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, the Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. They were all together. Constantly devoting themselves to prayer. It's what Jesus told them to do after all. They didn't know what else to do. Jesus had said, wait in Jerusalem until the promise of the Father. Wait until the Holy Spirit comes. And as a, as a kid, I, I went to a church. I grew up in a church that did a whole lot of waiting. We did a whole lot of, of praying and talking about inward things in the life of the church. We talked a lot about, about heaven, a lot about what to do inside of the, the church building, the church congregation. You know, when it came to personal devotion, when it came to piety, really, we excelled at that church I grew up in. But after a season... 
waiting begins to quench whatever fire we once felt. You know, there's a type of waiting that, that goes wrong. A type of waiting that doesn't realize the Holy Spirit has come. Where our story goes next, the Spirit comes and they go out to the highways and byways, but there is a type of waiting that doesn't ever leave the sanctuary, doesn't ever leave the upper room. I think we know what type of waiting I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about committees and meetings that only ever plan to do something when the time is right. But the time is never right, is it? Waiting, it just seems to drag on and on and on as we talk about what could happen and yet never go. And at some point, point the, the world beyond the house of prayer never actually sees the kingdom of God on earth as in heaven. And Jesus told them to wait and they gave their whole lives to it, constantly devoting themselves to prayer. That prayer meeting in the upper room is not the end of the story. It, it was never meant to be the end-all, be-all. I mean, that constant devotion to waiting it has its place. But it wasn't what Jesus meant when he said, and you shall be my witnesses. The power from the Holy Spirit is not about building a kingdom that sits around and waits. If something different happened when Pentecost finally came. The upper room, it was only a staging place for the movement of God that was soon about to burst out into the streets. This is Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. In our own languages, God's deeds of power. Yeah, after all those days of waiting, all those days of, of looking up, all those days of, of looking in, finally, the ground-shaking movement of the Spirit of God forces us out from the upper room, out to the highways and the byways where all the people are. The whole world gathered right there in our streets, the people of God becoming the empowered church as they went. Go and be my witnesses. That's when they felt the Holy Spirit coming upon them. See, God had already gone ahead of them. God was already bringing the, high, the gospel to the highways and byways. God was already building the kingdom of God on earth as in heaven. You know, I think we know it's true. In fact, I know we know it's true. I've almost been here a year and I'm constantly astonished at this church and its commitment to missions, both local and global. It's wrestling with what it means to be a missional church. I, I know we know that it's true that when we go, that's when we find God moving in crazy awesome ways. Do we want to know more of God's grace? Well, let's go. Let's go bring the gospel to those who are hurting every single time. That's where we see God at work. That's where we see God at work. You know it, 
in those moments when my faith has felt dry, usually it's when I go. When I find God calling me somewhere new, that I feel God's presence lifting me, even as it's not even about me. It's about the gospel going forth in power. And yet I see God at work in new ways. That's the gospel. That's our missional call. That's our missional God. God forms the church, the people of God, as we go, therefore, and be the witnesses of Christ. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. You know, that call that Jesus gave in Acts 1-8, it's not just a call for this church. It's a call for this church. It's a call for all of us believers. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. Do you want to know when God is building the kingdom? Do you want to know where God is building the kingdom? Do you want to know how God is building the kingdom? I hear Christ give us a response. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. And you will be my witnesses. When St. Augustine, in East Texas, in Texas, in the U.S., and even to the ends of the earth. May we hear that missional call of our missional God. And go therefore and make disciples. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. Let's sing one more song together. The song... We'll be singing tomorrow. I think many of us know it. Shout to the Lord. I'm actually going to put a capo on. There we go.
Father, we are thankful on this day that you love us enough to call each of us. So, Lord, as we go from here, may you fill us with peace. And speak clearly to our hearts that we might know how to go. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for you. All God's people say, Amen. May you go in peace.